Hi everyone, and welcome to English Digest. I'm Pat. Hi, I'm Stephanie. And we're going to be looking at our history unit for this month, and we're going to check the history of certain fashion items,、mm. and kind of look at how that they were originally made for men, but seem to now have switched over until a lot of them are considered more like women's clothing. Well, let's be honest here, Pat. In the past, the men were making all the decisions. They were out there inventing everything.、Um, there were very few women that had much say in things, and I'm not the strong feminist, but I will admit、um, they were the ones who were out there. So I'm not surprised. We're going to find out though that some of those things that used to, well, that are now considered feminine or for women, used to be worn by men originally. Let's check out today's article, and then we'll be back to explain our way through it. In the realm of fashion, we often label clothing as for men or for women in a gender-specific manner, but history tells a more complex story. Several items we now consider women's clothing were deeply influenced by men's fashion needs in earlier eras. Take high heels, for example. These shoes were initially worn by Persian cavalry in the Middle Ages. To secure their feet in stirrups while riding a horse, European high society took notice centuries later, and the trend of men wearing high heels in order to look taller and more impressive reached its peak under French King Louis the Fourteenth. He even made high heels exclusive to the nobility, turning them into a symbol of status and power. Then there were stockings, once a must-have for European gentlemen. After the knitting machine was invented in 1589, silk stockings became readily accessible to upper-class men, keen to conceal leg hair, which was a social norm at the time. Louis the Fourteenth likewise embraced these products with enthusiasm, initiating a fashion wave. That soon crossed gender boundaries. Wigs too have a masculine past. Although the use of wigs can be traced back to much earlier times, it was King Louis the Thirteenth of France who made wearing wigs popular. When the king faced premature hair loss in his twenties, he began wearing elaborate wigs to conceal it. This personal solution quickly became another status symbol among European noblemen. This historical journey through fashion illustrates how gender associations with clothing items can shift. Next time you consider fashion's gender rules, bear in mind that they're more like suggestions, subject to change and reinterpretation over time. So let's take a look at our title first. Explore、mm. the gendered history of these fashion items. So that means we're not just exploring the history in general, who came up with them, where they were invented, when they caught on.、Mm -hmm. We're looking at the gendered history. If something is gendered, it means it's kind of got a male or a female attribute.、Mm -hmm. In many languages, words are gendered. In、oh, French,、true. in French, like words are feminine or masculine. A lot of them. Yeah, the Romantic languages, as we call them, like French, Spanish,、mm -hmm. German. Is、yeah. German? No, not really. Not German. No, no. it's Germanic. I had to take. So, oh, German's hard.、Um, yeah, it's le and la. Yeah. L. And and actual objects are male or female. They are things like a river. I think is female and, and stuff like that. And who decides that, that stuff? It's、Just、kind of funny. History did. I But, know. So what we're looking at here means the gendered history. We mean、mm -hmm. whether these items of fashion were created for men and for women, and how they kind of migrated from what they were originally into what they have become. Yeah. So the article starts by saying, in the realm of fashion. We often label clothing as for men or for women in a gender-specific manner. Totally. But, but history tells a more complex story. So a realm is—it's a similar word to kingdom, but it's a bit broader than that. A realm could be a country. You know, the、mm -hmm. the lord of the realm would be the king of that land. But realm can also be used for something that's、uh, we. It's not really there. It's an idea. It's a concept. It's an abstract thing.、Mm -hmm. So fashion is an abstract kind of kingdom. 
but it is sort of a world by its own, and so we call it the world of fashion or the realm of fashion. We could also talk about the realm of education, the realm、right. of literature, and we use、ideas. it a lot when we're talking about general areas of knowledge.、Mm. So you'll hear it if you're talking about different areas of knowledge, like here it's fashion in the realm or the world of fashion. Yeah, just a fun word to use instead of saying in the world of fashion or in the fashion world.、Mm. It's a different way to write it, so it gives some variety to your writing, and that's important. So we often Label clothing is for men or for women in a gender-specific manner, but as we've said, history tells a more complex or complicated story. Several items we now consider or think of as women's clothing were deeply influenced by men's fashion needs in earlier earlier eras or eras.、Mm. You can say it either way: era, era.、Um, We're going to go through some of the examples. They're fun. Yeah, we've got. We're going to start with high heels. Yeah, take high heels for example. When we use take in this way, we mean again consider, think of, or here are high heels for your consideration. So you might say, like, look at the look at the movie directors. Take Spielberg for example. This is、yeah. what he does. So it's it's offering an idea up、mm-hmm. to be discussed. These shoes, these high heels, were initially worn by Persian cavalry in the Middle Ages. To secure their feet in stirrups while riding a horse, so Persia was a kingdom from kind of like Roman times onwards until about the sort of towards the end of the Middle Ages. It covers、yeah. the countries of Iraq, Iran, those areas of the Middle East.、Um, it was a very big, powerful country at the time, very influential.、Uh, before it got kind of broken up and bits got conquered by other people, they were、so、very、on. successful. Yeah. yeah. And they were well known for their cavalry. Ha- cavalry is horse soldiers. If you were a soldier who rode a horse and used a bow or a spear to attack people with, you were in the cavalry. Yeah, because long ago, a lot of soldiers were foot soldiers. They didn't、mm-hmm. have a horse. You'd have to have a lot of money to put your soldiers on horses. So a lot of、uh, these poor, poor soldiers were on their, you know, were just, you know, walking along the land and.、Mm. Easy targets to be killed. Yeah, infantry yeah. is the is infantry. the name. Cavalry and infantry are the sort of two military specific terms. Horse soldiers and foot soldiers. So cool. So this is back in the Middle Ages, a long time ago, eleven hundred for to fourteen hundred, something like that,、yeah. kind of in that area. If you secure something, you make sure it doesn't move. You kind of lock it down. You put it in its place. We use it for different things, though. You could say. Oh, I just secured a new job in the best industry, which means you you were offered the job, you took it. It's now yours. It's something that belongs to you. But here, it just means it it fixed their feet into those stirrups. Stirrups are the the part of the saddle that goes over the horse、mm-hmm. that the rider puts his foot into, and then you know they ride along with their foot in the stirrups. There are two of them on either side, one on either side. So. To keep them from getting, you know, getting loose or coming out,、uh, they had these high heels put on their shoes. Cowboys, of course, would put spurs on the back of their boots.、Mm-hmm. Boots, in case you haven't noticed, have a heel on them as well. Yeah, because there's a the stirrup can often just be as small as like a small bar. Yeah, and so it fits into that gap between the heel of the shoe and the longer sort of front of the shoe,、yeah. the flat bit of the shoe. <laughs> So it meant that they could sit in their saddle and they wouldn't fall off, and their feet would be in the right place when they needed to control the horse. Right. And we see European high society took notice centuries later. High society is the upper classes, really. It's the nobles, the wealthiest people, the king's family, the high churchmen, all of those people in the upper classes with all the money and the influence.、Mm-hmm. And the trend of men wearing high heels in order to look taller and more impressive, which is one reason for wearing them, I suppose, reached its peak under French King Louis the Fourteenth, who very famous, the Sun King. This、mm-hmm. is a guy who ruled France for like seventy odd years.、Yeah. He led fashion. He led everything. He was the guy. To be basically, he was very、France. vain.、Mm-hmm. Um, he he was the one who built the castle Versailles. Yeah. If you've ever been to France, you probably will want to go out and see Versailles. It's gorgeous. It's got gold and you know marble and、Mirrors. glass, and it's amazing. Back then, probably because 
their food wasn't as nutritious, and people died young. The men and women were all much shorter. So if you go and see some of these old castles, you'll notice that the beds are quite small.、Huh. Yeah, that's the first. I was like, how do people sleep in those? Oh, they they weren't as tall. Yeah, that's it's so, definitely true. Yeah. So then they would start, of course, if they could afford it, buy shoes with high heels. And he made it kind of popular, you know. If the king's doing it,、mm. the rest of us can surely. Pretty much surely. have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and he even made high heels exclusive to the nobility. If something's exclusive, that means it's only allowed for certain people,、right. either the very rich or you have to have certain qualifications. Certain things in stores might be exclusive to like members. You know, certain areas、True. of a gym are exclusive to members.、Mm -hmm. You have to join. You have to be part of the club to get this thing. He made high heels exclusive to the nobility. The nobility are the nobles. They are people who own the land. They own actual stuff, buildings, huge farms, estates, and so on. In Europe, yes, and that's the reason why America. Uh, fought the the American Revolution. We didn't like this idea of having people just being born rich and born to this high society. We felt like, hey, maybe you can work up to it. Maybe you can.、Uh, maybe you're smart and you work hard and you're rich.、Um, America has its own upper class. Let me tell you.、Um, but anyway, we call them the nobility. And again. He only let the the noblemen wear these high heeled shoes, so it wasn't very fair to you know the common commoner as we called them. But that's the way life was back then. We are going to continue talking about more of of some of these fashion items that were popular for men long ago, but now、uh, have kind of reversed. But right now we're going to take a quick break, guys. Listen to our Chinese teacher, and then we'll be back. 听众朋友，大家好，我是安娜。我们今天要带大家看一个好有趣的文章哦。原来女装背后哦，是因为受到男装的影响。怎么说呢？文章一开始啊，它这个主题的引入啊，我们今天先来 focus 在，如果我们要写主题句或者是文章的第一段要引入的时候，总不可能一开始就先把重点全部都讲清楚了，这样子好像不好玩。可是，在英文当中的写作，就是你这个文章到底要写什么第一段？大概就要提到啊，跟我们中文说哦，全部的重点压在最后面，结构又不相同，所以在第一段当中，我们要特别注意一下的是，第一句最后面的 a more complex story 有一个更为复杂的故事，因为在衣服当中我们会说女装或者是男装，可是历史其实告诉我们一个更复杂的故事，我们就会期待文章的后面。会告诉我们一些由来，或者是所谓的 story 故事，到底是怎么样的复杂情况呢？甚至在第二句也有几个关键字是我们可以注意，在下面的文章应该会是陈述的重点。例如第二句前面的 several items， 有我们现在觉得应该是女生衣服的有几样东西，哎，是哪几样啊？我们就可以预测接下来的几段。应该就会针对这几项不同的女装商品来做说明。还有，同样在第一段第二句最后面 ，fashion needs， 这个 fashion needs 是 men's fashion needs， 男人当时时装的一个需求。In earlier eras， 在更早期的时代，那这个早期是什么时候？是五十年前吗？是一百年前，还是几百年前呢？当时男生的时尚的这个 needs 需求是什么呢？我们在了解第一段其实会点出文章的重点之后，接下来就可以看到二三四段其实就是三个例子。第二段呢是以 high heels 高跟鞋为例，第三段举的是 stockings， 当时男生会穿丝袜哦。还有第四段是第三个例子 wigs 假发。好，所以我们先来看一下第二段。例如，我们先看一下高跟鞋。高跟鞋不是女生要穿高跟鞋吗？没有哎。一开始其实是男生在穿，什么男生啊？什么时候呢？这个在第一段我们都有点出这些 stories， 必须要交代清楚的。所以在第二段的第二句，时间出现喽。The Middle Ages 在中古时期，原来是当时波斯骑兵在骑马的时候用来穿的。那他们当时的 needs 需求是什么呢？因为 to secure their feet， 
他们穿这个鞋子啊，穿高跟鞋是为了要把脚固定在 stirrups 马鞍上面。好，所以后来呢，后来不是中古世纪开始流行哦，到了几百年后，第二段的第三句，第二段第三句 ，European high society， 这个 high society 真的就是所谓上流社会的意思啦。他们在几百年后就突然注意到这一点呢、啊？哎，这样看起来会好像很高很帅，哈、哦、的这种感觉。而且这是几百年之后哦 ，centuries later。那后面的这个 later 之后，我们要注意一下有一个关系子句的简化。The trend of men wearing high heels， 把这三个字可以左右挂号起来。Wearing high heels， 这里的 wearing 应该是 who。Wore 用过去式 W O R E， 所以有一个趋势，什么趋势呢？就是穿着高跟鞋这些男生这样子的一个趋势，就是看起来要更高啊，然后更帅，就在这个法国的路易十四统治时期就干到高峰了，达到高峰。所以当时的大部分的这个上流社会的男生啊，都一定会穿着高跟鞋，这样子觉得更高更帅。而且当时的路易十四甚至使高跟鞋成为贵族所专属哦，其他人都不行穿的。不过在这里第二段第四句的地方，中间后面有一个逗点的 turning， 这边要抓出来，它是一个补充说明关系子句的简化。turning 还原应该是 which turned， 而 which 要特别注意哦，它指的不是前面的 the nobility 哦，它指的是 he。句子一直到逗点这个地方，也就是国王路易十四让高跟鞋专属于贵族的这件事情 ，which turned them 就使得贵族贵使得这个高跟鞋 them 在这里指的是高跟鞋，使得高跟鞋变成了一种权力的象征。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. 嗨 ，everyone. Welcome back. So we've just finished talking about high heels, which were originally worn by horse soldiers, men,、yeah. but were then adopted by further by nobles throughout France to make them look taller and more impressive. But they've kind of stayed on as women's fashion. Now、mm. I do hear of occasionally men putting little things in their heels to look a bit taller. Oh yeah. Like、uh, Ron DeSantis. Oh, did he? Somebody who was running for president、There、in America. Yeah. So now let's move on to our next fashion item,、mm -hmm. and the way this next sentence reads, it carry it's used to carry on the same idea.、Mm. Then there are stockings. So the use of then shows that it's a kind of conversational. It makes it quite a casual flow of this. It's nice. Yeah, and it moves on to the next topic. It's introducing a new idea, but it's doing it in a casual way. So we've got stockings, which are very long socks. I always think of Christmas stockings as、mm -hmm. the things you hang up, but it's socks that would go all the way up to the knee, maybe further, basically depending. Yeah, they go further.、Um, stockings、uh, nowadays are different because they're very fine nylon. They're、mm. made out of silk sometimes, but back then, yeah, stockings would、uh, probably weren't. Weren't quite as high for the men.、Mm. They've turned into a higher sort of、yes. a sock for women now, but. They were stockings, and they were a must-have for European gentlemen. After the knitting machine was invented, and this is back in 1589, they were able to knit silk stockings by machine. So it was a lot faster, and obviously, if something's、uh, easier to produce, more people will wear them. But they were readily accessible. Readily means very, very、um, quick to put your hand on. So the readily accessible, easy to find, but again, they were readily accessible to the upper classmen, keen or very、um, eager.、Uh, eager, that's、yeah. a good word. Eager, keen is、um, used more in England, but I love it. Keen, eager to conceal leg hair. As you know, men have hair on their legs, so do women, but、mm -hmm. we shave. But yeah, they wanted to conceal or hide it, which is interesting. It was a social norm at the time. Our article says if something is a norm or the norm, it's normal. It's what most people do. It's、yeah. considered the fashion, the style, the trend. If something's a social norm, most people have it or do it. And apparently, back in the day, that included hiding your leg hair. If you were a gentleman, you wouldn't 
go out in public and show off your hairy legs, you'd hide them. Well, you remember they wore、um, longer coats. Well,、yeah. their their pants did not go to the floor. That's right. Remember, it, go back and look at some of the pictures around that period of time. Their their pants would go like over their knee, and that's it. They would、yeah. button, and then they you'd see that ugly leg hair、mm. <laughs> with their high heels. So they wanted those stockings to cover it up. Yeah, and we saw how Louis the Fourteenth of France embraced high heels and made them popular, and he did the same with stockings.、Mm. Louis the Fourteenth likewise embraced these products. Likewise means in the same way, and we use it here because it's the same king that did the same thing with high heels. So, in the same way as he made high heels popular, he made stockings, silk stockings, popular as well. He embraced them. To embrace physically just means to give somebody a hug. Yeah. But to embrace something in a slightly more、uh, figurative way means that you accept this idea and you kind of do so publicly, and then go on to be a supporter of that idea. You say, "Yes, this is a good thing. I think everybody should do this." So you really accept and support some sort of idea. Of course, everyone looked to the king back then. He was the important guy. And then all the nobility, you know, that were in the castle serving him or going to, you know, visit. For... Yeah, be in the court. You'd have to dress that way. Yeah, you have to dress up. It's a、uh, really fancy stuff they were wearing. They also wanted to look cool, so they embraced these products with enthusiasm. Initiating initiate just means to start something. This initiated a fashion wave that soon crossed gender boundaries. Now, of course, there were women in the courts as well,、um, so you know they would be looking around at each other and kind of seeing where fashion was going. But if it crosses a gender boundary, it just means if women had it first,、uh, after a while, men would have it as well, or it just cr- maybe they switched completely、mm. and women no longer did something and the men did it. So yeah, it's、uh, it managed to cross gender boundaries even back then. So let's move on to our third item, which is wigs.、Mm. Wigs too have a masculine past. Now, of these three, I'd say wigs are, are the most sort of still gender neutral. Men wear wigs as well as women do. But we call them a different name. I would say it depends. What if it's if it's a man wearing a a wig to kind of hide his baldness? I would still I would use the word toupee. Yes,、mm-hmm. but if it's like a you know for a party or for a costume,、oh, yeah. I'd still call it a wig. Oh, if it's a co- Yeah, if it's a costume or you're you're an actor like you are, and you're on stage, you'll often be given a wig、I'd、to still wear. Still call it a wig. A toupee is the hide the fact that you don't have hair kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, toupee is for people in real life.、Mm. They're not on stage doing a part or in a movie. But that's of course、yeah. what a wig is. It、mm-hmm. is fake hair that is. you that's attached to a, a kind of a usually a latex sort of fake scalp, a bit、mm-hmm. of like a very thin covering that can fit very snugly and closely over your own head. And when they're good, it looks like your real hair. You, you're like, what? That's a wig. I had no、yeah. idea that looks so natural. I've worn my share of wigs.、Uh, some can be really pretty, and others can't. You know, the word in Chinese is is false hair. Okay. So it's perfect. I love Chinese words because you just say what it is.、Uh, so wigs too have a masculine past. This word masculine just means it has characteristics that were traditionally or are traditionally thought. To belong to men and not women,、uh, the opposite word for the women would be feminine, and then masculine. So, although the wi- use of wigs can be traced back to much earlier times, it was King Louis the Thirteenth、oh. of France who made wearing wigs popular.、Hmm. So, yeah, wigs would go back a lot longer.、Um, people have worn them for many centuries. Oh, yeah. It was this particular French king. So we know he's before. King Louis. He was the thirteenth person called Louis to be king of France. <laughs> I can't remember whether it's actually Louis the Fourteenth's father or not. I kind of think it isn't. I think it was another Louis, of,、yeah. a, another generation or I, two before. I just, well, because I studied French history, he's not very famous. Let's no, just say I、that. remember him not being、yeah. as as important.、Mm. But he made wearing wigs popular. So it all seems to go back to these French kings as、yes. the trendsetters. But he was doing it not just to、uh, to look fancy. We see when the king faced premature or premature hair loss in his twenties, 
he began wearing elaborate wigs to conceal it.、Mm. If something is premature or premature, it happens before it is supposed to happen. Yeah.、Uh, a common use is premature baldness when、mm-hmm. guys start to lose their hair much younger than is considered normal. We also have premature birth, which is when babies are born before the nine months. Yeah, premature of, labor. I was thinking, my, yes, my sister's daughter just had a baby today. So, oh, congrats! I'm thinking, thank you. Really cute. Yeah. So it happens before it's supposed to, or when people think it should happen. So he started losing his hair pretty young. Twenties、mm, is pretty young. And since he was famous and rich, he、mm-hmm. thought, I'm just gonna. Just gonna get a, a wig. Yeah. So and not、I'm、just sh- any wig, an elaborate wig. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sure it was very long.、Wig. And and back then they used real hair. But on we、wigs. still do. We still do.、Time. Those are the those are the expensive good wigs. So this personal solution to his problem, which he thought he had, quickly became another status symbol. If you have a status symbol, it shows people that you're somebody or that you have money. So they kind of look at you. For example, if you drive a Benz or BMW, it's a status car. Yeah, Gucci Sta- bags, yeah. LV, LV, all those. all those are status symbols. And it was, a, and that was a status symbol among European noblemen in、yeah. particular. Nobleman is the same as nobility. It's just specifically the men of the nobility rather than everyone. Right. So the article now moves into its conclusion. This historical journey through fashion illustrates how gender associations with clothing items can shift. To shift means the same as to move, to change in some way. To it's all, a shift is often a bit more binary from one thing to another.、Mm-hmm. If it was a gradual change, we might use the word evolve、yeah. instead. A shift is more. It's this state now. It's this state.、Yeah. It's gone from one to the other, and there weren't other directions. There weren't a lot of steps in between. It just happened. Right. So next time you consider fashion's gender rules, bear in mind or keep in mind that they're more like suggestions, subject to change and reinterpretation over time. Is something subject to something? It just means、uh, you have or experienced that particular thing.、Um, usually, we use it、uh, in an unpleasant. Away, you know, we're subject to pay income taxes、mm. in any country li- we live in. No、yeah. one likes taxes, but there you go.、Um, I think it's interesting because we're seeing how、um, the media and fa- the fashion world generally are trying to get us to accept men and women's clothing, and I'm not doing it yet. Sorry. No, I, I think <laughs> you can pretty much wear anything you want. Guys in dresses are not appealing to me. Okay. <laughs> Um, I would go for. I've worn skirts and dresses. It's all fine. Sco- well, you have on stage. I got the legs for it. I also have a Scottish friend who wears kilts. They're、and、different, though. Those are sexy.、Yeah. Those are masculine, I think. Yeah, they are, but they they were done. You know, they show a lot of clan stuff as well. So that's oh, it、fun. is, and it's yeah, it's a symbol of their family roots,、mm. and they're very proud. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that brings us to the end of the article. We're not quite done yet, though. We're going to hand over to our Chinese teacher one more time before we come back to wrap things up. 那另外就还有丝袜啦，所以接着我们就到了第三段 stockings. 那丝袜这种长丝袜怎么不怎么男生会穿呢？哦，原来是有一些由来的。不过在第三段的第一句啊，特别注意一下这个 must have 这个复合名词 must have 就是字面上。必须要有的。那现在的英文当中，不管是 must have， 甚至是 must see， 把 have 换成 see， 就会变成是你去旅游的时候一定要看的景点，或者是呃某一些韩剧，或者是美剧是一定要看的，某一些节目你一定要看的，这个都可以用，像 must have 必需品一定要有的 must have 我一定要看的 must see。所以当时的欧洲绅士啊，一定要穿丝袜。那丝袜呢，在一五八九年之后啊，就发生了一些编，这个发明了编织机器。那这样大家都可以经常可以取得这种丝质的长袜嘛。当然，那个当时的丝袜跟现代女生穿的是不太一样，不过也叫做这个所谓的丝袜。不过我们在第三段啊，第二句这个地方，同样也看到关系子句的简化哦。先行词是 upper class man， 后面的 king， 一直到逗点前面的。Leg hair 这边可以左右挂号起来，这边的结构刚跟刚才我们说啊，第二段第三句是一样的，所以 king 不是转换，而是 king 前面省略的是 who were， 因为 king 本身是一个形容词，我们会说 be king to do something， 
很渴望做某一件事情哦，因为他们想要把腿毛藏出来，呃，这这个藏起来，所以想要把腿毛藏起来的这些上流的绅士啊，他们就会穿丝袜。好，那这个 leg hair 逗点之后，不是还有一个 which 吗？ Which was a social norm？ 这里的 which 要小心哦，它跟我们刚才第二段最后一句话一样。都是属于补充说明的关系子句，可是 which 也不是指的是前面的这个腿毛，而指的是逗点前面这整句话。也就是说，要穿丝袜来遮盖腿毛这件事情 ，which 这一件事，整句话是一个当时一定要做的事情，一个 social norm， 一个社会规范。那接下来我们就要看到第四段的第三个例子，就是 wigs 假发咯，我们知道，当然现在人男生女生。都是会戴假发啦。不过假发为什么过去跟男生也是有关呢？原来啊，当时法国国王路易十三，因为他二十多岁呢，这个头发就提早脱落，有这种问题，后来他就开始戴假发。那我们在第四段这个地方，请大家要特别注意第二句有一个特殊的强调句，或者是所谓分裂句。第二句在 times earlier times 逗点之后的。It was 跟后面的 who 这三个字，我们先把它抓出来。如果你用手指把它遮住的话，你会发现这句子好像什么都不缺。King Louis the Eighth of France made wearing wigs popular， 好像什么都不缺。但是这样子的一个句子啊，我们没有办法判断出它有没有特殊的强调句，所以现在插入了一个强调，用 it 加 be 动词跟后面的冠带，不管是 that 还是 who。然后我们在 be 动词跟冠带中间插入，你到底要强调什么？例如在这里，就是法国国王的路易十三世，就是他来让戴假发这件事情变得很受欢迎。那我们就可以把人夹在 be 动词跟冠带的中间。这个冠带你可以用 that， 如果是人也可以用 who。这个就是所谓的强调句或者是分裂句。所以呢，我们今天看的这个时尚啊。女装背后其实也有藏着很多男性的需求，后来演变成女性的这个服装，希望大家都能够了解喽。我是安娜，我们下次见。Hi everyone, that brings us to the end of the article. We hope you've enjoyed learning some interesting facts about how fashion items have changed from masculine things for men to feminine things for women. Hmm. And you know, based on what you like, you should go and. Look for com- comfortable clothing, but also clothing that represents you. That brings us to the end of today's article. Thanks very much for listening for English Digest. I'm Pat. I'm Stephanie. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye bye. Bye.